The content of a spent nuclear fuel rod starts with the outer shell layer of cladding. The cladding is metal, it's what holds all the fuel in, and it's zircaloy. It's an alloy of zirconium that has a small neutron absorption cross-section. The fuel itself starts with uranium dioxide, and it's not natural uranium. It's got to be enriched in one of its isotopes. The isotope uranium-235, which is fissile, has to be increased above its natural abundance, which is about three-tenths of a percent as found in the dirt. So when that uranium is increased in enrichment to 5% of uranium-235, that becomes the fuel that's burned. And depending on how long that fuel stays in the reactor, you can burn one, two, or even up to 3% in some cases of that uranium-235. Now, typically in a light water reactor like we have deployed around the United States, that process of fissioning the uranium-235 will also cause some activation of the uranium-238, which is at about 95% abundance initially. <clears throat> the activation of the uranium-238 causes it to radioactively decay from uranium-239 down through neptunium-239 to become plutonium-239, which then starts getting burned because it's fissile and it becomes a reactor fuel. So often you'll have about as much plutonium as you do uranium uh, 235 in the reactor core at any given time. The reason why you can't keep that going indefinitely is the fission products. When you fission uranium-235, you get different isotopes that are effectively neutron poisons for the most part. The same with the plutonium. And so you can keep that going until the poisoning effect of the fission products is too much for the reaction rate to continue on in a critical fashion. So, uh, great question up there. Thanks for asking it. Have a good day.